Hi, welcome to the preview video for the second generation Amazon Kindle DX with Global 3G. Hopefully you've uh, had a chance to look at the unboxing video. Um, if you haven't, you can go to the Boido's Tech Talk channel on YouTube, or otherwise you can check out the blog at blog.mingersoft.com. That's M-I-N-G-E-R-S-O-F-T. And uh, you'll be able to find uh, both the unboxing and the preview uh, blog entries for this device uh, right there. So without further ado, uh, we'll get into the preview. Um, now what you'll uh, usually find when uh, the device is off is um, it'll have something on screen um, like that and a message up down the bottom, slide and release the power switch to wake. So the Kindle um, doesn't actually use any power um, unless the wireless is on, but it'll be off when it's sleeping. Um, and it only uh, uses power um, when it's changing or refreshing the screen. So uh, because e-ink stays static, um, you won't use any power until you flip a page or you select something else on the screen, etc. So that's why the battery life on these devices are it's, uh, absolutely phenomenal. Uh, so what we'll do now is uh, we'll just go around the device. So we'll look on uh, that edge first. So you'll see that there's two notches there. Um, they're for use with the um, Amazon Kindle cover. So you slide uh, two hooks in there, one for each notch. And uh, basically the Kindle is pretty much uh, well suspended inside the cover. And you can um, just open the cover and use the device um, however you like. Uh, moving around to the top, so you'll see the power switch here, and a 3.5mm stereo jack. Coming around to the other side, um, you'll see that there's an up and down audio button, fairly standard. And on the bottom, uh, we have two speakers, so th these grills here. That one over there, and a micro USB port with a uh, little LED there. So it'll glow orange when it's charging and green when it's fully charged. Um, on the front, you'll notice that there's a range of buttons here. So we have the home button, so that gets you back to the home screen for where, from wherever you are. There's a uh, back navigation button, so uh, if you're in a book, that's used to go back a page. A forward button, so again in a book that allows you to flip forward a page. Uh, then we have a menu button, so that'll give you uh, a context menu, something equivalent of a right click in Windows, um, and you can change options or settings for the program or wherever you are in the uh, system. We have a back button, and we have a five way directional pad, so we have up, down, left, right, and uh, pushing to select. And right down the bottom, we have a QWERTY keyboard. Now, it's probably not the best keyboard in the world, but you can use it, um, and it does the job. So what I'll do is I'll uh, just turn it on. That should just refresh in a moment. Okay, so this is the home screen. So it'll list all the content that you have, um, and it'll also show your... Uh, uh, cellular reception and how much battery you've got left. Um, going through the home screen is fairly simple. You just uh, use the directional pad to select what you want and you uh, push it in to select it. So what I'll show you is uh, one of the ebooks I'm reading at the moment. It's a sample. It's um, I Was. So this is uh, Steve Wozniak's um, autobiography or biography, and um, that's just where I am in the text at the moment. Um, now you can see there hopefully that the contrast on the screen is fantastic, and it, it's very easy to read one of these e-ink displays. Um, because there's no backlight, you're probably less prone to getting eye strain, and um, you, know, you could probably read a whole book without um, running into too many issues similar to uh, a printed book. Uh, now, if you are um, 
if you do find it hard to read small text, uh, what you can do is uh, down the bottom is uh, there's a little text size button there. So all you do is you select that, and you get a whole bunch of sizes to choose from. So I'm on the third smallest there, um, but if I wanted to make it larger, I can just do that, and text will keep getting larger um, to suit. So if you're really blind, you can read like that, um, and you can keep um, reading along. But I will just put it back on the third last one, which just suits me fine. One other neat feature is um, auto-rotate. So pretty much any device these days will have it, uh, even the iPad. So if you don't fancy reading in portrait mode and you want to go to landscape for whatever reason, you've got that option right there. That looks pretty well. And um, again, to move uh, back a page, press the back button, move forward. There you go. And to get back to the home screen, you just press the home button. There you go. Um, now, there are a couple of other things I want to show you. One is the uh, text-to-speech functionality. Now, um, for ebooks, um, publishers can decide on a book-by-book -book basis as to whether or not they want to enable that uh, functionality. Unfortunately, with uh, that ebook that I was, um, they've chosen to disable that. But um, we'll go for the um, Kindle DX user's guide, which is, I'm sure, very exciting and enthralling. And um, I can just show you what the, um, the voice sounds like there. So to turn turn it on, um, on the keyboard, you need to um, press the Alt and the Symbol keys. So if I do that, it'll just take a moment. Just try that again. In fact, sorry, it's Shift Symbol. Files Kindle DX can display a PDF document without losing the formatting of the original file. Just drag PDF files over USB to your Kindle or email them to your dedicated Kindle email address. On, on the settings page on Kindle or the manager your Kindle page on Amazon right parenthesis. If you email a PDF document to your Kindle's email address, we will wirelessly deliver the PDF file directly to your Kindle via WhisperNet for a fee. Let Kindle read to you. You can also choose to turn on the experimental application. Text is peach. With so you can, um, well, hopefully hear that um, the voice is not too bad. Um, it'll do the job if you, say, want to do some housework and, you know, keep going with your book because you just can't put it down. Um, but, you know, it, it's kind of middle of the road sort of voice, so it'll do. Uh, there are also um, some other quirks, so with brackets, it'll say um, left parenthesis, and for end bracket, it's right parenthesis, um, and sometimes you can get the context of the word wrong, so here you can see um, let Kindle read to you, uh, the voice said uh, let Kindle read to you, so um, you, you might need to expend a little more effort when you're listening, just to make sure that you're interpreting the context of what's being read out aloud properly. But um, other than that, you know, it's a good feature. Um, one other thing you can do is um, this device is also compatible with um, audiobooks uh, from content providers such as Audible, uh, which is a company owned by Amazon who made this device. So, um, you know, that's another option that you've got there. Um, speaking of audio, um, this also does include um, MP3 playback functionality. So the way that you get there is you press the um, home button. And then we go down to menu. And then uh, have a menu come up and then we need to go down to experimental. Just choose that and then you get in here. So you'll see in that middle paragraph there, um, 
select this item to listen to music or podcasts while we read, hold down the Alt key and press the space bar to stop or play, or the F key to, or Alt F, which I've found out, uh, to skip to the next track. So um, I'll show you that now. Now, do excuse my taste in music. So that's John Pynum, um, for those who don't know. Let's go to the next track, it's Alt F. Okay, so um, hopefully you can hear that, you know, it's a little bit tinny. Um, if you really wanted to listen to it on, um, well, listen to it properly, you could always use the um, stereo jack up the top there and connect it to some speakers or some earphones. But, you know, for, for something that's designed as an e-book reader, it's um, not a bad uh, feature. Um, one last thing I would like to show you is the web browser functionality. So again, in the um, experimental screen, it'll be the top option there, basic web. So all we need to do is um, hit the button down there to um, bring up the bookmarks page. So what I'll do is I'll go to Google. So this is the um, PDA version of Google, which will come up. All right, so there it is, and you can just type in a search term and off you go. But I actually want to go to the full site. So if I, if I press up and then um, I go right to move my cursor all the way to the end of the uh, URL and just delete the end off it and press the enter button. That's Google. Uh, and to get down to the search box, all I need to do is uh, press the down button, my cursor moves, and I will just type in uh, Boido Tech Talk. Again, the keyboard can be a little bit fiddly, but it works. And there you go. So you can see um, some of the results there. There are a couple of my YouTube videos there, which is good. Um, and some of my blog entries. There's this Facebook page there. And you know, some other sites referencing my content. But the top, top links are going back to my blog there. Um, if we want to try a slightly more busier page, so for Australians, um, news.com.au might be a popular site. So I'll just try that. Now, one thing to bear in mind though that um, this is not a powerful device by any means. So you can easily overwhelm it by um, going to a website um, that has um, a lot of um, scripting going on. So things like Facebook, um, it'll work, but it might just be incredibly slow. Okay, well, you can see there that, you know, news.com.au is just degraded into um, a bunch of text, but we are in basic mode. So what I will do is I'll um, just attempt to change that. So you just hit the menu key, and then... Um, whoop, Auto rotates just kicking in there. And then you go down to use desktop mode. So I'll just choose that. And the page will um, just attempt to reload. Done. All right. No. So that's going to be it. 
So, um, there you go. Uh, so, your mileage may vary with the website that you're going to. So, some may work, some may not work so well. So, anyway, um, I'm now moving into the uh, review period for the uh, Kindle DX, second generation with uh, Global 3G. Um, I know I said I'd um, provide a side-by-side -side comparison with the um, uh, Kindle, the standard Kindle third generation model, but my wife is currently overseas um, and has taken it with her. So I will endeavour to show you that in the review video. Um, hopefully that'll be somewhere in uh, the next two to four weeks and also provide a review on the uh, standard Kindle as well to let you know what my thoughts are. Um, as always, um, if you've enjoyed the video, make sure you give it a thumbs up uh, and check out the blog at blog.mingasoft.com. Thanks for watching.